All right, so last talk of the day. Uh, we have Rashid, who's going to talk to us about a large-scale Kubernetes deployment. Welcome, Rashid. Thank you. All right, um, before moving any further um, into this talk, I just want to take a few seconds to say thanks, a great, a, a very, very big thanks to a few companies, Snake, which has a booth, at, uh, at KubeCon, OVH, and Clinic, and Clinic. These are the companies that made this talk uh, a reality. So a big shout out to them, and at least but not last, uh, my lovely wife. So who am I? Um, I'm Rashid Zawali. Uh, I'm a freelance architect. I run different uh, communities. I'll speak a bit about that later, later on. And if you want to see what I do, you have my Twitter, email, and uh, my website. What I do, um, a lot of things. Uh, obviously, I work with my clients. As a cloud architect, I try to crawl the whole cloud scope. And um, I also run different communities, um, organizing events, speaking, reasons why I'm here, and so on and so forth. So how the project started. Um, when I uh, joined OVH, uh, Kubernetes deployment were uh, one deployment at a time, meaning using Archie uh, provider with Terraform, leveraging OVH. If you don't, uh, OVH CDS, sorry. Um, if you don't know what OVH CDS is, it's an open source solution that does uh, continuous deployment that has been built at OVH, and it's completely open source. And it leverages also different internals API for bar middles and. Uh, and other stuff like that. One Kubernetes cluster at a time. We had known few issues, uh, node management, issues with Terraforms also. We don't have any reconciliation mechanism. Scaling is at some point a pain, especially when you have very large platform uh, into your states. We also had serious concerns about our key long-term support as the V1 uh, we didn't have any clear answer about if this uh, RKE v1 will be still supported or will disappear in the coming months. And although uh, different, let's say, different issues with internal API that has uh, been rewritten or are in the process of rewriting, especially the bar middle management, which, are, which is kind of uh, specific at OVH in a way that you don't order through the APIs bar metals, you order a system, and then the APIs gives you back a, um, a bar metal instance. What I mean by that is you don't know beforehand what is the name of the instance, of the instance itself, all the instances. Um, and it has some drawbacks in managing nodes in your Kubernetes clusters. We don't know in advance how to easily drop out of the cluster a node, especially because we don't necessarily know it in advance. It's the API that draws the system installation, and once the system installation is done, it gives us um, the system name. Basically, this is how it works at first. So you, you do a, a, a commit, go through TDS, Terraform, then TerraGrants, and some linting above that. OpenStack, which is uh, the underlying platform, our key and OVH providers that are used uh, in this case, and you deploy a very single Kubernetes cluster. What we were looking for is how we can move for, from one cluster to thousands of clusters at once. Meaning, if we want to spin up a full region, we just want to spin up the full region with a single git commit and leave it out to whatever the system to manage the whole deployment of these hundreds and thousands of clusters at once with reconciliation, with um, all the um, uh, control mechanisms that exist. So how I started, um, basically I started to crawl the internet and GitHub and look for tons of projects that exist 
Uh, you have few of them, but the list is very short. Uh, I started with a hundred of projects and going through each and any of them. Are they able to do multi tenancy Are they able to do large management? Are they able to deploy on OpenStack? Are they able to deploy on BarMetal, blah, blah, blah? It was a mess. So we just settled down a bit and write down simple criteria. What are the main criteria that we want to um, answer for the final solution? A single endpoint. We don't want to have to leverage several application or mechanism to do this large scale deployment. Seamless node management, I've spoken about that. We want to be able to select which node to drop, which node to add, and so on and so forth. Full GitOps, reconciliation, obviously zero downtime, agreed. We don't want to have all those clusters down during uh, the, um, the upgrades. Long-term support, especially regarding RKE. Maturity, obviously, and down the road, I'll speak, I'll speak about that later on, hybrid clusters. Are we able to deploy thousands of clusters with nodes that are bar metal and nodes that are uh, VMs on top of that? So once that we uh, wrote down those criteria, I just went through this whole project uh, that I've uh, selected. And I've came, I, I came with a short list, basically cross-plane from Upbound and the cluster API. We had two last criteria, which were uh, the, uh, the final decision uh, for, uh, for this project. Is there any production-grade OpenStack support? And are we able to leverage this solution to deploy Kubernetes on top of existing bar metal or existing virtual machines? In this case, Cloud API 1 especially because OpenStack support in Crossplane was, let's say, not that stable. And Crossplane is, uh, how could I say, uh, leverage different mechanism. It triggers API, and those API will have the responsibility to deploy the bar metal and then deploy uh, the, uh, the Kubernetes clusters. And this, is, this wasn't exactly what we were looking for. So what is Cluster API? Basically, Cluster API is a way to use Kubernetes to deploy Kubernetes clusters. Your Kubernetes clusters can be everywhere, um, VMware, Azure, Google, Amazon, whatever. It leverages what we call providers, and these providers helps your management cluster to deploy uh, your, your workloads um, in the end. In death, what we do is we deploy into a management cluster, a seed cluster, if I can say that way, all the mechanisms that we need to deploy these workloads cluster. So basically, we have different steps. We have the bootstrap, infrastructure, um, the control plane also, and the machines. Regarding OpenStack, um, we use a tool, well, all the uh, cluster API providers use a tool called Cluster CTL, and this tool helps you into generating your manifest and managing also uh, your deployment. So what we do here, we leverage OpenStack provider named Capo um, to target the OpenStack platform and deploy well, the, the, the platform. The OpenStack cl cluster controller is responsible for the infrastructure, so booting up the VMs, and machines is connecting into the VMs and deploy your Kubernetes, Kubernetes instance. And then uh, you have the kind of things. Um, I have a demo, it's quite long, uh, like close to the talk lens. So I won't go through the demo or else I'll take, stick with you for an hour. If you want to just see the full demo, I have a recording that is in progress. Just scan the QR code. You will go to the upcoming uh, YouTube channels that I'm working on, and I just push the uh, full demo, which uh, shows everything from seeding the cluster to deploying several clusters, workloads clusters, in the end. 
what I will show you here is how I made this project and how basically it works. So, how is it? Um, let's go there. So basically, um, I'm a using a hem chart that I built with few templates. So I have the bootstrap, cluster, cube, uh, cube control plane, machines, and OpenStack. And this Helm charts leverages Cluster API and the OpenStack provider to deploy uh, my clusters. I have definitions of clusters that are here. And these definitions of clusters are using Argo application sets. And I'm simply using a plain YAML file where I pass all the values of the Helm charts. And just, it's very simple. And if I want to add more clusters, I simply have to create more directories and in each directory is to create a simple YAML file like this one. That will trigger Argo CD and then Argo CD will manage the deployment um, of my full cluster. A brief overview is, so this is my Argo instance. I have my project that is, that is here and I have here this one and this one over here. The clusters that has been deployed with the Helm charts that I built into OpenStack to uh, the, uh, the virtual machine on top of it and then Kubernetes clusters. So you have here all the mechanism. Uh, what do you have here? The, uh, so these are the machine deployments that you have here. I have the control plane. All the definitions that creates my clusters are managed, are managed um, here by Argo. If I want to create another one, um, I simply do, let's try it out fast. Um, where am I? I go to clusters, let's say ARS 3 dash capo. Let's take this one, copy paste. Um, oh, there we go. KS3, give it a name, correct name, KS3. Should be it. Okay. Oh, it's challenging. All right. Let's go here and call it, as I said, kas3-capo.yaml. Okay. Now let's do git commit-am demo test. Oopsie. Yeah. It didn't get clusters. Come on. All right, let's do it first. All right. Timo test. There we go. Get. I'm lazy. And if the demo gods are with me. I should have here another instance of the cluster that has started there. So this is my new cluster, which has started to be deployed. And if I want to go, if my deployment is ongoing pretty well, I can go into a simple shell here and do Oopsie. There we go. Um, let's get to the cluster. Let's get logs. And as you can see, it goes pretty fast. So it's creating all the instances. And in a few minutes, uh, the cluster will be boot up. And I'll be able to leverage it. 
So I do it with a simple one. You can easily imagine how fast it can go if you want to go through deploying thousands of clusters at once. It's the same mechanism. Um, but things didn't go that well into, woohoo, where are you? Okay, I missed my, right. Few issues. Uh, because we had issues. Uh, basically, I ran into a rate limit into Keystone. Keystone is the component into OpenStack that is responsible for everything around uh, authentication. Uh, I left the seed cluster running for uh, days, and at some point, Keystone just dropped me out, and if Keystone drops you, there's no way to deploy more clusters. Uh, few documentation, documentation glitches, especially uh, the fact that in the cluster API since uh, three releases, um, all the providers are out of tree. So you have to adapt your YAML to use an external controller that will be deployed into your workloads cluster to interact with the underlying platform to deploy um, everything that, you're in, that you need, uh, load balancers, IPs, storage, and so on and so forth. A certain inst instability also, uh, K K KP did a did, did few things, like deleting clusters, and once you delete the cluster, uh, the KP provider dies, don't know why. And a, an, a known issue with the latest uh, LTS of Ubuntu, which simply doesn't build. I don't know why. There's an issue open, you can look at it. It takes hours and just in the end crawl. So if you want to leverage Ubuntu, quick tips, switch to Flatcar. It's easier. Um, this is the kind of message that you can have when you play with it that tells you nothing about what's happening. The issue here is very simple. I missed a configuration into one of the files that OpenStack uses. There's no way in this message to learn what's going on. Absolutely no way. I'll, I'll challenge you to find it out. And if you find out, I'll buy you a beer. Limitations, uh, because there's also limitations. Um, we wanted to leverage hybrid deployment. This is a no-go. There's no way for now to deploy a single cluster that leverages uh, bare metal instances and uh, virtual machines. It's either full bar middle or full virtual machines. This is something that's, uh, I think, in a progress, but for now, there's just no way to, uh, to do that easily. Um, OVH leverages for, what, for everything around routing its own solution, which is called I IPLB, and it works completely differently uh, than, than Octavia, which is the component responsible for everything around load balancers and IP intrusion. And again, these were uh, some issues that we have to deal with. And one of them, th the last one is, um, if you want to leverage OpenStack, you have to build your own images. Default images doesn't hold everything needed to deploy Kubernetes using the cluster API. There's a um, image builder project that you can e easily leverage. You just have to go for it. And again, don't use the Ubuntu, use the flat core. Key takeaways, um, node management is now a brief. We have a list of node management. You can easily drop a node, then automatically the cluster API will spawn a new one, integrate it into the cluster, no issue. Kubernetes upgrades are done in place, almost zero downtime, like few uh, ICMP packages that you lost in the process, but it goes very smoothly. I can't share it now again because it takes too long, but it's very easy. You just change um, one of the uh, values that you have, you upgrade the Kubernetes version, and that's it. Simply as that. Cluster set is very, very interesting. What is cluster set? Cluster resources set is a way to use cluster API to deploy into the workload clusters, whatever you want. CLI, controller managers, applications, and so on and so forth. And one of the main key takeaways that we wanted and that we leveraged throughout this VOC is we now are able to leverage Kubernetes to deploy Kubernetes at once from one to thousand clusters. Next steps, uh, because the road is 
very long, trust me. Um, OVH has its own, let's say, OpenStack integration, so, and we wanted to leverage the hybrid system. So this is where we needed, and we still need to do some customization, either build our own cluster API provider, or use an existing API provider, cluster API provider, like the OpenStack, and add the support of Ironic. Ironic in OpenStack is responsible to manage everything around bar middle. And as I said, um, work around this IPLB and storage API to be able to also use this routing mechanism that exists at OVH and use everything around storage, block storage, that are avail available throughout their own uh, APIs. In a nutshell, if you want to use cluster API to deploy thousands of cluster on top of OpenStack, OVH or not, it's a go. It works really, really, really easily. If you want to go the hybrid way, this is a, a work in progress. Uh, go to the uh, cluster API channel on the community Slack. There are discussions uh, around this in how we can create something that can do this hybridation. It doesn't work for now. If you have any questions, I'm up for it. Questions? Um, uh, great talk, by the way, um, on Thank using you. GitOps as, a, as the principle, using GitOps to deploy uh, on Kubernetes clusters. Can you talk a little bit about the maybe the um, maybe about cross-plane um, on on your thoughts on your findings of why it didn't work or what could be the things that they can do? Oh, in the project? The, the, so, um, when the, you were um, comparing the, the other solutions? No worries. Um, the fight between Crossplane and the Cluster API is very easy. We wanted to leverage OpenStack. OpenStack is not supported at Crossplane. And we wanted to be able to deploy Kubernetes on top of whatever exists, bar middle or, um, or virtual machines. If we wanted to leverage, basically, cluster, um, Crossplane, we would then have to build our own cross-plane provider to deploy everything at once. And this is a road that we didn't want to go through at, uh, at this project stage. This is as simple as that. More questions? Hey, uh, thanks. So you mentioned the, the authentication issues that you, you faced uh, when bootstrapping a lot. With Keystone, yes. Yeah. So what, what other potentials um, APIs can break, basically, when this kind of, uh, when we're sp sp spanning up, uh, I don't know, hundreds oh. of, of clusters? Or uh, basically, if you, if you are not able to authenticate with Keystone, there's no way that you can deploy anything. You have to authenticate with Keystone at first, and then be able to, to be able to leverage OpenStack APIs. So what happened is I, I built the seed cluster. I deployed three clusters just to play with them. I left them for days and weeks. And at, uh, at some point, I was like, OK, it worked for three. How about 30? Just to go um, a little bit higher. And I had some issues. and. Uh, Digging in, I, I, I didn't see uh, at first what happened, but I just saw in the logs that I have authentication issues. And when I went to the team that manages the uh, public cloud at OVH, that's where I learned about this uh, Keystone rate limits. This is, a, uh, this is a, um, a safe mechanism to avoid that application, uh, how could I say, hammers Keystone, because if Keystone dies, OpenStack dies. All right, that's it. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.